Today in the news, we got some Ampere and some Ryzen Burnout. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. It seems like in the last few days, we've been getting closer and closer to getting most of the answers when it comes to the specs of Ampere. Yesterday, we had an Igor's lab leak where his sources added some information and confirmed our TDP suspicions. Essentially, there would be three SKUs identified by the PCB number PG132. The highest end card, which is right now called the RTX 3090, would have 24 gigabytes of GDDR6. The card under it, the RTX 3080 Ti or Super, would feature 11 gigabytes, and the RTX 3080 would be a bit lower at 10 gigabytes. The connectors are also slightly different, with only the 3090 having support for NVLink. Anyways, on to the TDP. All we've been hearing so far is a TDP of between 300 and 350 watts. Turns out the 3090 is going to be at 350 watts, and the 3080 slash Ti is at 320 watts. Now, Igor's lab does specify that this is the total board power or TBP, which is technically different than TDP because it takes into consideration things like PCB and VRM heat loss and fan power. But just know that 90% of the time when you look for a chip's TDP online, you end up with the TBP number. Also with NVIDIA, we just got new pictures of the heatsink, and while it's not magical in any way, I can sort of understand why there's the whole short PCB thing with the inverted fan. Let's go to the PC to take a better look at it, and I'll explain my theory. So here's the new heatsink picture. We can gather some information from it. First is that there are four large heat pipes that run through the entire card. Also, that the height of the fins varies, which means that this side of the heatsink probably isn't completely blocked, allowing the airflow to travel this way and this way. And this large black area could be a flat vapor chamber too. Now remember, the fan is still blowing on the PCB, which isn't ideal. I'm talking about the one closest to the I.O. There's a reason a good tower CPU cooler doesn't point the fan at the motherboard. So the fact that the second fan has no obstruction means better cooling. I don't understand why it would point towards the basement of the case though. That's That kind of baffles me. Now, I know that the big vapor chamber idea seems a little bit excessive, but for a cooler that is rumored to cost up to $150 US alone, excessive makes sense. Also, that price has to go somewhere, and I betcha that Nvidia is not going back to $700 high-end GPUs, unless AMD can compete, of course. Next up, we got AMD. Well, technically we got Tom's Hardware talking about something related to AMD. They recently published an article called Ryzen Burnout, AMD Board Power Cheats May Shorten CPU Lifespans. That piece talks about some motherboard manufacturers who are misreporting some measurements on their X570 board, which results in current boosting and better performance, but also makes the CPU draw as much as twice the amount of power. According to the article, this can burn out your CPU, reducing its lifespan. They compare the uh, stress of this power draw increase to overclocking, which makes sense, but at stock settings. You can check out the article if you want to go more in depth, but I have to stop here and say that this is pretty much the same thing as with almost every overclockable board for Intel CPUs. Sure, they don't do exactly the same thing, but multi-core enhancements and other things like base frequency boost result in much higher power draw than stock for a performance increase. The only difference here is that with Intel, you can disable those options and run truly stock. Unfortunately, with the AMD third-party board vendors who are modifying the uh, current boost, you can't actually disable it. As for the actual burnout and shortening of lifespan for the Ryzen CPUs, Dr. Ian Cutris wrote an insanely in-depth article about electro migration and why current boosting for Ryzen will, spoiler alert, well actually won't kill your CPU. There's also a section that shows you how to check the increase and power draw for your own system. And in console news, we got the founder of Moon Studios giving us some fighting words on the PS5 versus Xbox Series X debate. Essentially, he's saying that the Xbox Series X's more powerful hardware will result in third-party titles running at 4K more consistently and at better frame rates compared to the PS5. On the other hand, the PS5 will load things faster. Now, notice he specified third-party titles. On first-party games for PS5, which is one of the main reasons you should consider buying 
trying one or the other, the games would probably be so optimized that loading screens might not even be a thing. It makes sense too. It doesn't matter how insanely customized the PS5 is, when a game needs to go on both consoles or even both consoles and PC, which is likely to happen more often, the developer isn't going to pour time into optimization for one platform over the other. If it runs and can ship on everything, they'll just ship it. What do you guys think about this? Let me know down below. And that is pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you wanna talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.